All right, kids, it's me again. I'm back to finish learning target 8.2 on the Pythagorean theorem and how to apply it. Now, I'm not gonna get to the application part today. I'm just gonna work on the Pythagorean theorem only. So grab your notes, grab your pencil. I need you to write some of these examples down in your notes. So I'm gonna start with your right triangle. Remember, we said the Pythagorean theorem only works for right triangles. So first off, I need to know what these two sides are called. Remember, those two sides are called the legs. And then we have this really, really long side that has a special name, and that name just happens to be really, really long. That one is your hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. So those are three um, pieces of your triangle that you need to know what the word for each side is called. Leg, leg, and hypotenuse. Remember the legs touch the right angle and your hypotenuse is always opposite of your right angle. That will be where your longest side is always found. Now on your Pythagorean theorem, remember it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And it's important for you to know where those letters go. So if I take that, oh, it's going to take the whole thing. That a squared is a leg. The b squared is a leg. And the c squared will always be your hypotenuse. You can interchange the a and the b. You can put them in opposite places if you want to. As long as they're legs, you're fine. But that C has to be on the hypotenuse. That is always the longest side. This is the first example we worked through in class today. On the bottom, I have four and three as my legs here. And C was my hypotenuse. So the first thing we're gonna do on a question like this, this is number one, since it's a right triangle, you're gonna start with that Pythagorean theorem. You're gonna write that on the first line of your paper a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Then we're going to go ahead and put our numbers in for our substitution. So 4 is my a, 3 is my b, and then I'm going to leave that c, since we don't know what that is, where the c is. That's not going to change. I'm going to copy everything else down, the little squared, the plus, the squared, the equal sign, and the 2. So all I did was replace the A with the number 4 and the B with the number 3. Now I can solve. 4 squared means 4 times 4, which is 16. Bring down your plus sign. 3 squared, which means 3 times 3, is 9. And that equals C squared. I'm keeping the C squared, so I'll be looking for that. Now I'm going to solve these. So 16 plus 9 is 25. I'm going to bring the equal sign down and my c squared down. Now I still have to get c by itself, just like an algebraic equation. That's my c. So what number has to move if I draw a line down here? This 2 has to go. Well, the opposite of squaring a number is square rooting the number. So draw your square root sign over there and make sure you do it on the other side too so you balance it out. C, the square root of c squared, these two cancel each other out. That leaves you with just a c. The square root of 25 is 5. That is my answer. So my answer was 5. That's the example we did today in class. Let's try a different one. And I do have a calculator. You can use them for class, but you still have to show all your steps. So get your calculator handy. All right, I'm going to assume this looks like a right triangle. So I'm going to start with that formula here. See if I can move this over just a little bit. And that will give me some room to do my work here. So my formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 
So I'm going to look on my right triangle and see if I can find the A, the B, or the C. I'm going to use 8, which I'm not going to drag it. The 8 is going to be my A. The 15 is my B because these are both of the legs. The legs always go with the A and the B. That equals C squared. Bring down your little squares. Super important. Now I'm going to do some calculations. 8 squared is 64 plus 15 squared is 225 and that equals C squared. So now I need to figure out what is 225 plus 64. Type that in my calculator. I got 289 on my screen and that equals C squared. I still have to get C by itself. So that means I have to move that little squared. And the opposite of a square is a square root. So do that on both sides so it balances your equation. Now, since these two cancel each other out, I still have a C. And the square root of 289 is 17. That's my C. This question looks similar, but is a little bit different. I'm still going to use my calculator. I can still use the Pythagorean theorem. There's just two things you got to be careful of. Now, I'm going to go right, right to my Pythagorean theorem here. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay. I'm looking for my legs on my right triangle. So... On my right triangle, my legs always touch the right angle. Well, I see a 36 on that side, so I'm going to write that for A. But my B is missing. I don't have a B. Now, I could put, you notice, I could put my 36 over here. It can go in either slot. It's not going to change my answer. I'm just going to leave it for my A here. I don't have a B, but I do have my C. Watch where I put this number. It's very important. That 39 is your C. That's got to go all the way on the end, underneath your C. That is a big deal. If you put it in the wrong place, we'll get the wrong answer. I'm going to copy everything else down that I don't have. So bring that little squared, little squared. Everything else comes straight down. Now, I'm going to do some math here with my calculator. I need to type in 36 squared. And I got 1,296. On the other side, I'm going to type in 39 squared. I got 1,521. Everything else comes straight down. Ah... This looks a little different here. Still have an algebraic equation. But the problem is I can't add these two together. One's a variable, one's a number, so that isn't going to work. So I'm going to look for that variable. My variable is b. i got to figure out how to get b by itself. So I either have to move the 2, the little squared, or the 1,296. Remember, you always move the number that's farthest away from your variable. So I'm going to move 1,296, and I'm going to write that on both sides of the equation. This is a, like a kind of like a two-step algebraic equation. Now, I see nothing in front of that, which means it's positive, so the inverse would be subtraction. I'm going to write that on both sides. So if I subtract those two, I get zero which is what I want. And if I subtract those two, I'm going to go ahead and type that in. 1,521 minus 1,296, and I got 225 on my calculator. Bring down your equal sign and bring down your B squared. I'm getting closer. There's my variable, but it's not by itself. I have to get rid of that little squared. Now, the opposite of squaring a number is a square root. So you put the square root there. Make sure you do it on both sides so you stay balanced. Now, these two symbols and numbers will cancel each other out, which leaves me a b, which is what I wanted. And the square root of 225 
is 15. So the leg on this is 15. I think we better try one more of those. All right, I'm gonna move this over a bit. And I'm gonna start by writing the Pythagorean theorem on my paper. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That should be the first line on your paper for every problem like this. Okay, so I have an X, a 12, and a 20. Now here's my right angle. This is a leg, so that's an A. This is a leg. I'm going to change this to a B so I'm not confused, but your book might use different variables. And then my hypotenuse, which is the long side, is the C. So if it helps you to put your letters next to your numbers, it's a great strategy to use. Okay, so looking for my A, I have a 12, so I'm going to put that in the A spot. Now, could I have put it over here? Yes, I could have switched those two around because they're both legs. I'm going to leave it right here. Looking for a B? What? I don't have a B over here. I don't have any numbers here, so I'm not going to write anything. I do have a C, which is 20, so I'm going to put the 20 underneath the C. Make sure you put it in the right slot. And I'm going to copy everything else down. The little squared plus B squared equals C squared. Perfect. Okay, so let's do some math here. 12 squared is 144. 20 squared is 400. Everything else I'm going to bring straight down. Okay, now I have a two-step algebraic equation. And here's the letter B. That's my variable. i got to get B by itself. So I'm going to move 144 first. So I'm going to write that underneath on both sides so we stay balanced. And that's a positive 144, so we do a negative. 144, and that is zero, is what I wanted. So I'm going to bring down b squared equals, I'm going to grab my calculator and type in 400 minus 144. I got 256. I still have my variable b, but it's being squared. I have to get rid of that squared, so the opposite of squaring is square root. So I'm going to square root both sides. Those cancel out and leave me with the letter B. And the square root of 256, if you type that in your calculator, square root of 256, <clears throat> 16. That's my answer. So there's a couple examples with a missing leg. When the hypotenuse is given, you will have some like that in your homework today. The second part of the homework is whether something is a right triangle or not. So the no you'll notice something different about this one. They give you what looks like a right triangle. They give you all three sides, A, B, and C. But you have to check to see if this actually works. Remember, the Pythagorean theorem only works on right triangles. So since it says right triangle, I'm going to start A squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's the first thing I'm going to put on my paper. Now remember, if this was a right triangle, this is a leg, so there's a or b. That's a leg, so I'm going to call that b. And this is c. So I'm going to take those numbers and I'm going to put them in their slots. I'm looking for a. a is 60, right down here. b, b is 40, I think I can bring that one over, and C is 68. Make sure you put them in the right slots. And that's it. I'm going to write everything else down that I haven't used yet. So I have a squared, and a plus, and a squared, and an equals, and a squared. I'm going to grab my calculator. These are getting big here. 36 times 36 is 3,600 plus... 40 times 40, 1,600. 68 times 68, 4,624. 
Now you notice I don't have a variable to worry about here, so I'm just going to do the math that I have written. I'm going to add those two numbers first, 3600 plus 1600. I got 5200. Bring down your equal sign and bring down this number. Do they in fact equal each other? Well, I don't think 5200 is the same as 4624. So I'm going to put a slash through this because a slash means not equal. And you're going to write no. You have to write that word no if it doesn't work. All of your work is up here. You have everything you need to prove that your answer is no. So let's try another one of those. Here's a different set of numbers. And they're asking me, is this a right triangle? So because of that word, the word right, I'm going to write my Pythagorean theorem right away. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now remember, if this was a right triangle, these are my legs. So <clears throat> there's an A, there's my B, and my hypotenuse is C. So I'm going to find each of those and move those. So my letter A is right here. So I'm going to put a 9 in that slot. My B, I'm going to put a 12 in that slot. And the C, I'm going to put in the C slot. Make sure they get in the right place. <clears throat> Everything else I'm going to bring down. The squares, the plus, the equal sign, and the squared. Now I'm going to do some math here. 9 squared is 81. 12 squared is 144. And 15 squared is 225. I'm going to bring everything else down. Again, I don't have to solve for any variables. I'm just going to do what I have here. So on a calculator, I'm going to type in 144 plus 81. I got 225. Bring down the equals, bring down the 225, and I have to ask myself, are these two equal to each other? Yes, they are. So you're actually going to literally write the word, yes, this is a right triangle. It works. And there's all your work. So sometimes it will, sometimes it won't work. The last piece I want to show you is they don't have to give you this information on a picture. They can just give you the numbers and you can do the same exact thing. It will look something like this. Is this a right triangle? And then they'll give you a list of three numbers. Okay. Now, the thing you need to remember when they give you a list of numbers is what's your A, what's your B, what's your C? The thing you got to remember is your hypotenuse is always the biggest number, no matter where it is at in the list. So out of these three numbers, 8, 10, and 13, my biggest number is 13 which means that has to be the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is letter C, so I'm gonna actually write my letter C underneath so I don't forget. I don't care which one of these letters, numbers eight or 10 gets an A or a B, but give one to each variable. If I do that to start, then I know what my numbers are representing. So because of that word write, I'm gonna write my Pythagorean theorem right here first. And I'm going to start putting my numbers in. So we said A is 8, B is 10, C is 13. I'm going to bring everything else down, all my squares, my plus, and my equal sign. And then I'm going to do my math. 8 squared is 64. 100 squared, or 10 squared is 100. And 13 squared is 169. I don't have a variable, so I'm just going to go do my math here. That's 164. I'm going to bring everything else down. Does 164 equal 169? No. I'm going to put a line through that, That's and I'm going to write no. They do not equal each other. So that's why I put a slash through and I wrote the word no. So I did the same exact thing, I just don't have a picture. If it helps you to draw a picture, you may do that but it's solvable with and without. This is my last example. My numbers here are 16, 34, and 30. Same thing, I gotta figure out which of these is my biggest side. The biggest number here is 34. The biggest number is the hypotenuse. 
And my hypotenuse is C, so I'm going to put a C underneath 34 right away. The other two numbers are A and B. Again, it doesn't matter how you write them if you do it that way. Or if you want to switch it, it doesn't matter. As long as you get C right. So I'm going to go back to how I have mine first. I like going in order. So because of that word, I'm going to write A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And start looking for my numbers. My A is 16, so I'm going to put a 16 in that spot. My B is 30. And my C is 34. Everything else I'm going to drop down. My squares, my pluses, and my equal sign. Okay, with my calculator, 16 times 16, 256. 30 times 30, 900. And 34 times 34, 1,156. No variables, so I'm going to go ahead and add these two up in my calculator. 900 plus 256 is 1,156. And I'm going to bring everything else down. i got to see if these are equal to each other. 1,156 is equal. So is this the right triangle? Yes, it is. And there's my work. This should take you through all of your examples. So here's your homework for tomorrow. I want you to write that down. And you've you got to show all of your work. You can use calculators, but you've got to show your work. Just remember, everything we did today took about five lines. So there's your homework. And good luck.